Good morning, Zambia. Good morning, Africa. And uh, I've come live this morning to update you on the serious situation that is going on in Swaziland. The situation in Swaziland is a situation that demands the attention and the solidarity of all Africans. Because Africa must unite if we are going to overcome the various dictators who rule us on this continent. Over the past uh, one week or so, the death toll in Eswatini or Swaziland, as it was originally known, has risen to over has risen to over 50. 50 people have been massacred by the police and the army. We have over thousands of injuries. Properties have been looted and it's chaos all over in Swaziland. And this information is not coming through because the internet has been shut down. News media have been shut down. So what is happening inside Swaziland, nobody knows except the information that we have gotten that i've gotten personally from people who are just who are who managed to escape from swaziland because it's neighboring south africa they are in south africa and they have given me this information which i want to share with you fellow zambians and the rest of africans out there because we are one people what what affects the people of swaziland is what affects the people of zambia and you zambians especially must be concerned because i know many of you wish that uh, uh, our president could also live just like the king of Swaziland has left. But actually, news emerging is that King Mswati is back. He's back with a bang. And 50 people have been massacred. Thousands have been injured. But before I go into the reasons why we must be concerned about what is happening in Swaziland and why we, we must uh, at least speak out on behalf of our brothers there in Swaziland, I wanted to share this small audio that was sent to me by a comrade in, Zam I mean in Swaziland who I won't mention. But uh, it's very important. I hope you can pick it up. We have visited a number of police stations trying to inquire about the whereabouts of many of these kids who are being kidnapped in the middle of the night by the soldiers of this regime. The main hospital, Mamane, had amputated 16 people, with the last patient having had both legs amputated. But also, I've seen dead bodies of people who have been shot. We hold. King Swat, solely liable for this massacre of our people. It will be irresponsible of us to continue urging our people to go out there and put their lives at risk. So we decided that what we are going to do, we are going to embark on a mass stay away and we are going to urge our people to only turn out on Saturday next week when we are going to have a series of prayers for all the departed martyrs who have been killed in this noble struggle to bring about democratic change in Swaziland. So that was uh, a news clip that was uh, uh, aired on SABC South Africa. And this is a spokesperson for the various coalition movements in Swaziland that have risen against the rule of King Mswati. And uh, what he's basically saying is that uh, uh, youths are being killed, others have been amputated, they are being shot dead by the army and the police, and nothing has been done. The concerns that he's raising are concerns which should affect us all. Because the institutions of governance in Africa, which are supposed to be speaking for the people of Swaziland, institutions such as SADIC, institutions such as the AU, are very numb. These people are very quiet. And you know, if you remember your history very well, you know what happened in Rwanda in 1994. When the massacres began in Rwanda, when the massacres began in Rwanda because of the, the Hutu and the Tutsi conflict, the, 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 the African community, by the African Union by then, was very quiet. The international community, United Nations, was very quiet. Even the French who already had troops in Rwanda were very quiet about it. Only when they saw the death toll, when we saw bodies of massacred people floating via the... Uh, coming into northern Zambia via Mpulungu and floating on the lakes of Victoria and the others, that's when we became serious. So the situation in, in Swaziland is very serious. And we have to understand what is really going on. Why are these protests going on? And what can be done about them? And why should you be interested as a Zambian in particular? Remember, uh, news diggers last year did cover a story that uh, uh, President Lungu had the investment in Swaziland. They even covered the story about a mansion that was being built 
for President Lungu in Swaziland. We don't know if he plans to go and uh, settle in Swaziland when he retires. When we retire him on 12 August, we are, we are not sure. But it doesn't look like he'll be going there anytime soon because the situation there is untenable. Even when the, the, the King Muswati has returned in Swaziland, the situation is still untenable because there is a curfew. Internet has been shut down. There is no communication inside and outside of Swaziland. I've got a comrade whose name I cannot mention. As we speak, she's in hiding. The last WhatsApp that she sent me was, I think, about uh, five days ago before they shut down the internet. So there is a massacre that is going on there. The comrade who managed to send, to send me that uh, news clip on SABC South Africa, he's just on the borders with Swaziland. He's in South Africa, actually. He manages, he's got uh, at least the internet and communications there are still available. But what is going on right now is that people in Swaziland are being killed. And the people who are supposed to speak out against such things, the leaders that we have, African leaders, they are all quiet. Because King Mswati is their body. And that's why I always say that this crop of African leaders that we have, it's an, it's an old Mandela's club. It's an old Mandela's club. They defend each other. Even here in Zambia, when we have police killing people, extrajudicial killings. Remember the killing of Nsama and Joseph. Even when we had those killings, the AU and the subject never came to our help. No country ever came to our help or spoke about the extrajudicial killing which the PF government has been carrying out on Zambians who simply wanted to express their, their democratic rights. The same now is happening in Swaziland. And you should be concerned what is happening in Swaziland because we have a lot of teachers in Swaziland. Zambians. We have a lot of Zambians in Swaziland. We have a lot of Zambians in Botswana, a lot of South Zambians working in South Africa, and a lot of Zambians working in Swaziland, especially teachers. Those are our relatives who are trapped in that chaos and that violence. And I don't know why the embassy in Swaziland, I don't know if we've got an embassy in Swaziland, I don't know why the Zambian embassy in Swaziland, or rather the Zambian is a mission in, in Swaziland, if not Swaziland, South Africa, haven't issued a statement for us to evacuate our people in Swaziland. Because right now they are trapped. The army is all over the roads. Defending a king who has sold his country to China. That is one of the major issues. Poverty in, in Swaziland is so much that the people in Swaziland have asked, are beginning to ask to say, this king who has ruled that since 1986, what is he thinking about us when he's bringing the Chinese to take over everything? They have taken over road construction, they have taken over the economy, they have taken over the king himself. That is the thing that is happening in Swaziland. So we must be concerned because of the people that we have, the Zambians that we have, who are right currently stuck in Swaziland. And we can't communicate with them because internet there has been shut down. Number two, we must be concerned simply because of the interests of, or rather the, 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 the Ubuntu spirit. The Ubuntu spirit. We are Africans. Our spirit is Ubuntu. We must express Ubuntu whenever our fellow Africans anywhere are being abused and are being killed, are being butchered, and no one is saying anything. We must be, we must carry out the spirit of Ubuntu. Today we are mourning Kenneth Kaunda, our founding father of Zambia. What stands out about Kenneth Kaunda is that he did not just care about the issues that were happening here in Zambia, but he also spread his vision across the borders to ensure to say that his neighbors also got freedom. Today those countries are relatively free. I'm saying relatively because you can't be free when you're unemployed. You can't be free when you have you can't afford education, you can't afford meals. You are basically living like a slave. So I'm saying those countries which are relatively free, Mozambique, relatively free, Mozambique, Zimbabwe, Botswana, Angola, those who we helped. Today we must express Ubuntu, the spirit of Ubuntu with them. Because if we do not express Ubuntu with them, the day that the PF government will be on us here. When they'll start butchering us, when they'll start arresting us, and in fact they've already started killing us. We, you don't you know the number of people of UPND, uh, UPND members that have been killed. Others, even innocent people like Vespa Shimunzira, a student who was killed in a room. Obed who was hacked on the head in Russia during elections. If we do not express Ubuntu, the spirit of Ubuntu, with our fellow Africans in Swaziland who are being butchered, don't expect that the Sajik is going to issue a statement condemning King Mswati because he's their he's their man. He's their man. It's an old Madalas club. The Sadiq is an old Madalas club. They support each other. That's why Sadiq hasn't issued any statement condemning the brutal killings of innocent Swazi people in Swaziland there. This king is a megalomaniac. What is it? What, what's the English word? Mega, megalomaniac. Anyway, you get the point is that a megalomaniac is somebody who's so, 
who's so full of himself, okay? He's so, who's so full of himself and uh, he, he exercises power to the extreme. That is what King Muswati is. King Muswati has ordered the army to kill, shoot to kill, to suppress this uprising. That is King Muswati. The Saji doesn't issue any statement. They won't issue any statement because he's part of the Madalas Club. The African Union, I call it onion. The African Union is an onion. Eh? Because anytime that crisis is happening in Africa, we are always crying as Africans. The African Union is an onion. It's an African onion, a Madalas Club of tired, fatigued leaders that are not interested in the welfare of Africans. Anywhere where there's a crisis in Africa, even in Zambia here, we've got a political crisis. Have you ever heard the African Union come to our aid or issue a statement condemning the extrajudicial killings of, uh, of, of Zambian citizens by the police? Have you ever heard the African Union condemn the political harassment, arrest, and illegal detentions of opposition leaders here in Zambia? Have you ever heard Sajik issue any statement condemning the brutal uh, 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 massacres? shootings and killings arrests of opposition leaders in zambia in zambia or innocent zambians have you ever heard them say anything against a leader in africa who's oppressing his people you will never hear it from the african union that's why i've got a good friend of mine who always says that african child you are on your own we are on our own and some africans really surprise me the issues that you support are issues that are outside africa George Floyd is, 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 is killed by a policeman in, in the United States. George Floyd, the one who was stepped on the neck until he couldn't breathe and died by a white policeman in the United States. All of us rose in unison condemning that act. Very far away, across the Atlantic Ocean, thousands of miles from Africa. All of us Africans, we rose to condemn the killing of George Floyd. Hashtag, we were all over Twitter and Facebook. Hashtag, hashtag I can't breathe, justice for Floyd. We rose for Americans. Africans rose for Americans. <laughs> when did you hear Americans speaking out for Africans? Tell me of any American that speaks for Africans when things are happening here in Africa. When we are being brutally treated, ill-treated here in Africa. Which American speaks for us? But we, the moment an African-American is killed in the United States, we are all over for the media for them. Recently in Palestine, when the Israeli government was in, in, launching missiles and tanks into, into Gaza, killing innocent women and children, bombing them in Gaza, Africans rose in unison, condemning the acts of the Israeli government in bombing innocent, innocent children in, in Palestine. But here in Africa, when things are happening to us, things are just happening close to our borders in Swaziland. 50 Swazi people, innocent youths, have been amputated. I played that clip for you. 50 or more. Now we are, perhaps a number by now, when we check again, it will be maybe 100. That was as of, of yesterday. 50 youths like you and me have been killed and massacred in Swaziland. You won't hear it anywhere. You won't hear any statement condemning that. Africans, I don't know why. I don't know if we hate each other so much. We don't speak for each other. I don't know if we, if we care for each other. The only time you hear us speak or condemn an act of violence is when it happens in the United States or happens in Gaza. That shouldn't be the case. We must ensure that we speak out, even for the dictators, the neighboring dictators we have here. Even in Zimbabwe here, where we have the dictator Mnangagwa. Even here in Zambia, we have our own dictators who don't want to allow democracy and the elections to go on freely and fairly. We must ensure to say that we protect and speak for ourselves. But in case you are wondering, what are the issues that have led for, to the Swazis to rise? Mind you, Swaziland is a monarchy. It's not a democracy. Swaziland is a monarchy. It's ruled by a king. It's ruled by decree. The word of the king is law. Now, in this century, surely, can citizens be led by the rule of, by the rule of a king? Who just wakes up one morning and says, shut down the internet. He just wakes up one morning and says, can you deploy the army on the streets to go and massacre anybody who's against my rule? The things that the Swazis are fighting for are the things that we as Zambians and most of African countries, we achieved in 1964. Democracy. Since 1973, the Swazis have been ruled by a monarchy. They have been ruled by decree. 
They are fighting for democracy. That's what they are fighting for. For the right for, the, for themselves to set their own political destiny and economic destiny. They want to rule themselves. That's what they have been fighting for. And this thing has been triggered because, like I've told you, King Muswati has sold Swaziland to China. And Swaziland is a very small country. That small country, which he treats like his, even he renamed, imagine, he renamed the country after himself. It was Swaziland. Officially today, it's known as Eswatini. Eh? Named after Muswati. King Muswati named, renamed Swaziland as Eswatini. That's how much he thinks he owns the country. And now he's sold it to, to the Chinese. And you know what it means when you've been sold to Chinese to, the, to China? It means now you are all slaves. So because of that animosity and that poverty that has resulted from King Muswati selling the diamonds and the gold and all the resources of Swaziland and the telecommunication, name all the important sectors of the economy, he has ceded them or given them to China and has caused the mass poverty among these people. The people have risen to say, no, 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 we can't continue to be ruled by a king. We need democracy. Those are some of the demands. So in short, uh, you, uh, from the uh, message or the, the statement that I received from a comrade who's uh, there in Swaziland, who's uh, right now, she has been shut down, she's in hiding. The demands, what she wants to share with you, what she wants to share with you, and I'm talking about a real Swazi here. We are not talking about news sources coming from Diamond TV or SABC. A real source, somebody who's on the ground and is in hiding from the police. The demands that they are making, which she wants to share with you, are that number one, they want the unbanning of all political parties. That's where we are going in, in Zambia if we are not careful. Political parties will be banned. The only political party that will be allowed now to be to, to rule is PF. And the PF have always said to say they, they don't mind going back to a one party state. In Swaziland, there is not even a one party state. There is no party. There is only the king. The king, his 16 wives, and countless concubines. Those are the people, that's the elite class that rules Swaziland. So they are saying they want the unbanning of political parties. They want political parties to be allowed to carry out their democratic duties. They also want Swaziland to return to multi-party democracy. They want several parties to be allowed to, uh, to, to, to carry out multi-party democracy. Number three, they want to set up a Republican constitution. Because the constitution that is in Swaziland is the constitution of word of mouth. The king is the constitution. They want a constitution. They want an banning of political parties, the introduction of multi-party democracy, and they want a republican constitution. They want to democratize, democratize Swaziland so that it can join the rest of us who are in this democracy. This democracy, which is the only democracy on paper, but when you look at, really look at it, you only have power concentrated in one party. They want a democracy. They want to rule themselves. Number four, the people of Swazi, Swaziland, or Amaswati as they call themselves, want the, 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 the lifting of the ban on the internet. Communication is a very, very important tool in this day and age. And communication has been shut down. Swaziland is isolated. The king is butchering his people and nobody around the continent or the world knows what's happening inside Swaziland. They want the lifting of the ban on the internet. And here in Zambia, we also know that the PF at one point or the other, before the elections which we'll have in August, they are going to shut down the internet. You can mark my words, we can bet on this. They are going to shut down the internet to stop what is happening here. I'm talking to you, I'm informing you. They don't want that during the elections. They are going to shut down the internet. But as we speak in Swaziland, people are being massacred. Swaziland is on fire. And we don't know what's going inside there. We are going on inside there. So they want the unbanning of the internet. And lastly, but not the least, they want the army to return to the barracks. The army has been sent to go to war against its own people. Armies are not meant to fight their own people. Armies are meant to protect the, the territorial integrity of a country. The Zambia army is meant to protect Zambia from foreign attack, not from local attack, no. To meant to protect people from foreign invasion. That is the duty of an army. But in Swaziland, we have the army that has been sent to go to war by King Mswati against the people. The army is killing people. I've told you 50 people have been massacred so far. Thousands, countless are injured. Others are being kidnapped from their homes. Others are being amputated. It's chaos in Swaziland as we speak. And there's a blackout, a media blackout. They don't want the world or Africa to see what is happening in Swaziland. So they want the army. They are demanding that the army returns 
to their barracks because the army belongs to the barracks. The only time the army should come out, whether in Swaziland or Zambia, the only time the army should come out is when we are under foreign uh, foreign attack. Either we are being attacked by the Congolese or we are being attacked by Angolans. That's the only time we should see the, the army come out. But otherwise, the, come, the army is not there to attack the civilians. army is there to defend the country from foreign invasion. So the Swazis have made a fourth demand, return of the army to the barracks. As at now, the representative of the Swazi coalition of political parties, the church and civil society, has called off all kinds of demonstration. They, want, they, they say they want to have talks with, the, with the King Mswati. They want to have a talks or dialogue with King Mswati. But they will return to the streets after a week. Next Saturday, they will return to the streets. That is the representative of the clip that I played you initially. If you missed it, go back uh, 10 minutes back from this video. You are going to hear a clip that came from the representatives of the, of the coalition in, uh, in Swaziland that's fighting against King Mswati. They want Mswati to go. The bottom line is they want Mswati to go. Muswati's time is up. Muswati is a dictator. Muswati is a butcher. Muswati has, 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 has amassed so much wealth to himself. And the people of Swaziland are poor. That's why they want him out. He has sold the country to the Chinese and they want him out. So that is the update that I had for you, fellow Zambians and Africans on Swaziland. There is a crisis in Swaziland. The AU, the African Union, or the African Union as I call it, is quiet. Sadiq is quiet. All these regional bodies of African leaders are quiet and nothing is happening. So it's up to you and me to spread the news of what is happening in Swaziland and call for the immediate stop to the massacring and butchering of Amaswati. If you'd like to uh, watch more videos like these on updates on African as well as Zambian affairs, please go to YouTube and type my name, Mind Asmata, on YouTube and subscribe to my page. Click, click subscribe and ring the bell so that you can be updated more on these videos otherwise this is the update that has come from uh, swaziland there is nowhere else that you are going to find such an update because i've got first-hand information from comrades who are inside and outside swaziland on the border between south africa and swaziland and they are the ones that gave me this information and they asked me to share this information with you so let us let's express the solidarity a spirit of ubuntu in caring for each other in looking after each other because those are one of the values that kk left us Look after your neighbor as well. Do not just concentrate on what is happening in your country. Yes, as Zambians, we've got problem. PF is a problem, and we're getting rid of that problem on 12 August. But also, let's also look into other countries, border, bordering countries, because we have our relatives there, and we have our fellow Africans there who want freedom as much as we want it. Thank you very much, and stay blessed. Join me again this evening on the usual election update on issues surrounding African elections, I mean, Zambian elections. And the question we're going to be asked is that if a presidential candidate withdraws, can that postpone elections? That's the question which you asked me yesterday, so I'll be addressing that question. If any candidate in the Zambian elections, presidential elections, withdraws from the election, can that, make the, can that cause the postponement of elections? I'll be addressing this and other issues. Join me later tonight. Thank you and stay blessed.